Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Today is Friday, as the recording of this Friday, July 23rd, 2021. As you can see from the sign behind myself and Natalie, it says Warner Brothers Studio Tour. Now, this will be the first time I have done this in many years. The last time, it was located over at the building right over here. Yeah. Does that look familiar? Yeah. But they have moved the Bugs Bunny little statue that was over there. Maybe the maybe the Bugs Bunny <laughs> is inside here as well. Totally new building, totally new tour. It's a lot of totallys. So they basically have a, a new museum area with some DC comic stuff in there. As well as maybe some Harry Potter stuff? Yeah, and then they have a whole costume section with like older movies, like interview vampires oh. and everything. So that'll be fun. I am most excited, me personally, for the, I want to call it a tram tour, but it's a golf cart tour. Yes. I like that. Gonna go around, get, get some clips of that, stuff like that, see a little history. <laughs> see where Hollywood is made. Hollywood is made here. <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, there's the water tower right over there. I recognize that from Animaniacs. Someone's going by with a piping hot caffeinated beverage, which I might partake of one of those as well. I'm inviting you to join me and Natalie. Shall you? Now our tour begins at 12.30. It is 12.13. They recommend getting here 15 minutes prior. Oh, there's Chris Reeves up there. Chris Reeves Superman. Oh, and Michael Keaton Batman. So we got here two minutes shy of when they suggested. So we are here right on time. Yeah, there's that water tower. Warner Brothers Studios. Okay, I think we are supposed to go in these doors. Also, LA County, these are required indoors, so bring in these, bring in these back out. Once again, you got yours? Yeah, I should have put on lip gloss right before them. When we first walk in, there's a, there's a little open area here while waiting in line. They have a recreation of the water tower. And it's a little bit of a check-in. Once you're through the check-in, you kind of look at a few props from some movies, a couple in the little cases, some, some different props here in the main area while check-in. And then you go into a little theater and you watch a, maybe like a little five minute movie talking about all the, the history of the WB. And then you board the, onto, the, onto the carts. If you have something you want to talk about, let's talk about it. Uh, there's no smoking or vaping, hands and feet inside, etc., etc. And uh, don't ask me for autographs. An idea of what's going to happen today, we're going to go check out some of our lot areas or down stages. We're going to see uh, the friends set over at stage 48 and then things wrap up in a little area we call action and magic. And that is where we have the DC Universe and the Wizarding World. But that's a little later on. Meantime, I'm gonna give you guys a little history of uh, this little thing we call Warner Brothers. A lot of buildings. Uh, we have office buildings, of course, for production. We have offices for television, which is the one on the right-hand side. That's where all the deals go down for television. But believe it or not, everything on this lot is usable for production. We will take every corner of the lot to film, including the television building, uh, which was seen in a show called the Sarah Connor, Connor Chronicles, the Terminator show. We played in high school very easily. This area we're heading into is what we call Park Place. And it is a nice little town, where apparently it's populated now, but that's okay, we won't hit anybody. But you may recognize, recently this was used in Young Sheldon. This place uh, on the left-hand side, a train uh, station fan club area where they, uh, Young Sheldon had a little job for a while. Oh, well, look, those people look familiar. Hi. So this is what we call Park Place, and it's a nice little town. It is, of course, what we call a facade. Now, a facade means it's just the front of the building, and each of these are that. There's really nothing on the inside, but maybe a little bit of space. Uh, everything on these buildings is completely changeable. That means signs, even the material that's on the walls can all be taken down and replaced with anything we want it to be. One of the big changes back here was for a movie called Ocean's uh, 13. And this was the front of the casino that uh, Al Pacino. Oh. So they actually go running out of that in that film, yeah. And again, it's up to their imagination. Whatever they want to build back here, they can change it however they want. Just around the corner is what we call Hennessy Street. And this is where we did a lot of our gangster movies way back in the day. So we're talking, you know, Humphrey Bogart, James Cagney, Edward G. Robinson made films on the street like Little Caesar and The Big Sleep. It was around the 80s, though. We kind of revitalized it for a little movie musical called Annie. And uh, that one was, of course, uh, where the orphanage uh, is located right there on uh, the right-hand side. That's the original orphanage. 
with uh, Carol Burnett. That was one of many musicals we shot on this street. Uh, in recent years, we had The Greatest Showman filming on the street with Hugh Jackman. This is uh, the opening song right after he discovers himself as a kid, weirdly in a, like a mirror. Uh, so you see all that. He actually, the kid steals the bread in front of the Annie Orphanage, which I think is kind of sad, but you know. Yeah. yeah. This is New York for Friends. We really didn't go to New York to really film anything other than like establishing shots, but oh, yeah. we saw Chandler chase down a girl on the street, jumps over like a taxi cab. Uh, Phoebe found a thumb in a soda over here on uh, the left-hand side. Uh, so a lot of shots for Friends. We also did a lot of shows like AJ and the Queen over here on the left. That was the front of their apartment. Uh, for that show, you see him running up and down the stairs in there too. But most of the sets on this street are practicals. So that means we can film inside and outside. It doesn't always happen, but for the most part, we can. Uh, we've done shows on the street from uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to Agent Carter. Lucifer also filmed on the street uh, for their last season. Spoiler. And uh, apparently we have ghosts because that door is opening by itself. Kind of <laughs> Uh, this green beard building here where the bistro is, uh, that was in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. That was the pet store that catches on fire, and Pee-wee Herman has to run in there and grab all the animals that's on fire. Uh, that, of course, is a Tim Burton film, which uh, also used the street. Tim Burton did Batman Returns. Uh, this was Gotham City. Essentially, it was just redesigning, adding pieces, set dressing, street, but literally over and over and over again. If we have any Gilmore Girls fans, <laughs> like, should I say anything? I don't know. But anyways, if you are, this is where, uh, when she went to New York, they just used these sets here as New York. Grab a hot dog, ran around the corner here. A lot of the strap dressing you see now in the windows and all this, uh, this is for young Sheldon for their new season. They were just back here a couple days ago doing some production, so very recently used. Just around the corner, if you're a Friends fan, you may recognize the area where Jean-Claude Van Damme was doing his uh, movie, and they were watching... Uh, young uh, little Marcel the monkey doing his little bit of a straight ahead there too and uh, there's a group of people look how attentive they are they're like really quiet are they really quiet they also in Pee-wee's Big Adventure Hi. right here Madame okay. Ruby's oh what's going on we're never going to see them again let's get Cruise comes out of those double doors the hard knock life uh, song you see the show Shameless right there, down there on that staircase this is the back alley to the alibi bar I believe also where the Spider-Man uh, kiss was the upside down Spider-Man kiss directorial debut Harlem Nights was, oh yeah there was a fist fight back here between a couple people and uh, it's also we did the upside down kiss in the oh. original Spider-Man yeah just on the other side of those <laughs> steps over there it's a great scene if you watch it. You see Mary Jane walking around here and then the bad guys and he comes to the rescue and it gets a kiss. <laughs> Pretty cool. Also the same location for the cover of uh, Prince's album, Purple Rain. It was on the same spot right by those stairs there. That's cool. So it's so many different things have shot here. So many different programs it's for close to 100 years now. I mean, we're really getting close to being 100 years old on this lot. And uh, we feel it every day. A lot of aches, a lot of aches, a lot of aspirin. Anyways, let's head on this area. We're gonna go uh, towards the front lot now. Any other shows you guys are huge fans of that you guys wanted to know more about or talk about? Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars, yeah, okay. Well, actually, the, up ahead here when we pass by, this looks like a motel over here on the right, because it was a motel in Pretty Little Liars. Yeah, it was. Is there anything left from the Waltons? Um, actually, quite a bit. We might pass by some of it, like that jungle area we were in earlier. That was actually uh, where the house used to be, but unfortunately there was a fire and uh, we lost the house and uh, part of that area. So, uh, let's see here, let's see here. Um, I don't believe they went to New York Street, but that big gigantic mountain that's like way over there, that was Walton's Mountain in the show. Griffin All right, Park. so we're gonna go not get hit by a car and uh, go to Chicago, ER. Oh, really? for uh, many seasons is the front of the hospital and the L train of course is just made out of sheet metal it's not an actual L train and it looks rusty because we painted it to look rusty so it actually is not but that's where the ambulance bay was if you watch the show shameless this of course was Chicago for that and uh, part of New York was also Chicago for that so that this is a practical set so that means we are uh, filming inside and out and if you watch shameless this of course is Patsy's pie so the whole restaurant was in there Oh, I can totally see people in the back there. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Now, one fun thing is 
Each of these windows are on little gimbals, so they can actually move a little bit. So if we see the reflection of the camera, we just move the window a little bit and we don't see it anymore. Interesting. No cameras. All every once in a while, things get through. I mean, that's what happens. What can you do? So as we head around the corner, you're going to see probably cool. what you wanted to see when you came here, uh, which is me. No. Uh, it's a little oh, yeah. thing we call the Friends Fountain. Oh. Now, unfortunately, we have some production setting up in this area, and uh, we're not allowed to go over there, but we're going to get a little closer to it. Now, the, um, this used to be on the Warner Ranch, Friends and they moved it over here recently. It was originally located on another lot which is the Warner uh, Ranch down the street. That's where we did all the filming for it. But so we recently moved it over here just so we could have it for its big anniversary. Oh, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go check out a couple things here. We're gonna be going across the this street. This is a coffee shop from La La Land right so here too. Step and we're gonna head over there. So if you wanted to uh, grab a photo, you can grab it here. Unfortunately, we can't approach it because it's getting ready, ready for production. Those are little oh, buttons. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Uh, it was originally on the other lot where we filmed uh, shows like 1776, the musical. You see the fountain in that. Hocus Pocus, Wonder Woman, The Witch, uh, The Monkeys all use the fountain. And there's even a couple Three Stooges shorts where you can see the fountain. Flashback to Paris, Humphrey Bogart uh, sitting out front, looking with Bergman. You also uh, see it in many other shows, from Murphy uh, Brown back in the day to, of course, our Big Bang Theory. If you watch Big Bang Theory, this is actually the front of their apartment. In the movie La La Land, they state that these are the windows from Casablanca. Pretty dang cool. Doll shop. Oh no, I. In the Pretty Little Liars, yeah, where they go and they find the doll sitting in the window over there. Oh, which is creepy because that creepy. show is creepy. It is. It's so yeah, creepy. yeah. But the thing about like Pretty Little Liars and Gilmore Girls, those two shows specifically, they use every inch of this lot. I mean, there's probably not like a tree that not show up that show. Have you seen the film La La Land? Uh, she actually points to like one of the windows over there, like, oh, Casablanca was shot there. No, it actually was not true. It was over here. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, and across the street, of course, is the La La Land coffee shop. Okay, La La Land so, fooled us all. We're going to make our way over there so we can stand According to the guide, it was these windows from Casablanca. You got to go in there? Yeah, we got to go inside and go on the floorboards and look inside like the last part of the Casablanca. <laughs> I do recognize this as the coffee shop from La La Land that she works at. And then of course over here. Batman, the original Batman TV series. Uh, it's not an actual coffee shop because we have a coffee shop on a different place in our lot, so that was all a production deal. Uh, let's go inside, just watch the stuff cut again. And we can see what it looks like on the other side. Right over here was the counter. The so the coffee is a counter. More practical. That means we can film inside here. Uh, of course, the Lala Land coffee shop was in here. And again, it's interchangeable. We do take the walls down, we can make a smaller space. As you can see, the roof is pretty much just like, you know, uh, uh, parkour board, so it's removable. We need to put lights up there, microphones. Uh, oh, yeah, also look. We can completely change if we want to. That's cool. Uh, and the brick. If you see all the brick around the outside and inside, this is all nice and no brick. You're welcome to knock off them if you want. It's actually just made out of fiberglass. These are flats that you bring in. You make them out a lot, and uh, it's replaceable. Exactly. It's easy to put up. It would take a long time, of course, to put it together. Uh, Agents of Shield used this as a big the deck lock, kind of blows up. And uh, West Wing, this was Barbara's Candy Office in the West Wing. Of course, they do. you guys have any questions about anything so far? West Street, so if you're Pretty Little Liars and Gilmore fans, that was the main town. Unfortunately, there's a production setting up there, so unfortunately we can't go over there. Okay. But you can see uh, Luke's okay. Diner on the corner there, and uh, some of the set pieces they're setting up over there. And uh, that is for a new Courtney Cox show called uh, Silver Veil, which is kind of a horror movie, TV show, comedy thing. You might want to check that out. All right, everybody on board? 
Good. All right, let's get out again, head to the next spot. Uh, we're going to be able to see more of New York Street, uh, the courthouse uh, in the 1960s. Batman TV show with Adam West was utilized here. Uh, for the Pretty Little Liars fan, we also have Ezra's apartment, which is on uh, the left-hand side there. And uh, I have not watched the whole show. And uh, there was an episode where they leave his apartment in a limousine parked over here, and they travel to uh, this big museum to, uh, you know, their little date in the limo, and they're in the limo, and they're driving the limo, and they're driving. But uh, the museum is right next door physically, so they just had to walk across the street. So that's also fun. Fun with film. Uh, over on the uh, right hand side, this Central Park, uh, Phoebe does her run through Central Park in here with her, you know, hands all over the place doing her really weird, weird run. And Rory's study tree is also there from Gilmore Girls where she paid a guy 20 bucks to hang out uh, and leave his area. You can see the water tower fairly good from over here in uh, part of our New York street. If you know the show All American, we have the hangout over there on the right hand side up ahead. And uh, there was an episode of Friends that utilized the green doors over here. That's where uh, Ross get pelted by the water balloons when he breaks up with his girlfriend. Bet you didn't think you were going to hear that today. We're going to be passing the sound stages. All of them are numbered. And really, I mean, this is where the magic happens and it is over and over again. Productions are here sometimes for years, but sometimes only for a very short time. There is a plaque next to the door over there, so feel free to grab a shot of that. Stage number 25 is our Big Bang Theory stage. There's also a plaque on that stage, too. It's the front stage. Currently in stage 24 is the United States of Al, which is a Chuck Lorre production. And uh, stage 25 is currently Bob Hart Abishola, which is also a Chuck Lorre production. Number 19 is Young Sheldon, and number 20 is going to be a brand new show called Head of the Class, which is a uh, revamp of the old series from the 1990s. Stage number 15 was home to Conan for many, many years. That's where he did his talk show until too recently. Uh, if you're a fan of Blazing Saddles like I am, oh, yeah. I found that that's where the beans and campfire scene was shot. Nice. Oh, cool. you I think you've had enough. Stage number 17 to 14 was utilized by Shameless for most of its seasons. The alibi was all interiors there. And uh, we had a DC uh, movie a few years ago called Birds of Prey. Productions just want to do their thing and uh, they just don't want to let anybody know. Sometimes there might be uh, just a big secret about it. So they're like, no, don't talk about it. But then you know, you drive by and there it is. What can you do? Well, it was stage one for many years. This is where uh, some of the classic movies like Casablanca was filmed, where you see the final moments when they say goodbye. And the plane was all shot in there. We also did uh, the reunion for the Eagles many years ago in 1994. When they reunited, reunited for their video, it was shot on stage number 12. Now back here we have production offices and bungalows, so just for a minute or two I'm going to have to get off the microphone, so they're all hard at work. So just uh, enjoy the ride, check out some of the names on the walls, and talk some amongst yourselves for a minute or so. So, now that we can not be quiet anymore, stage one, two, and three here is uh, where we famously did a lot of our early sitcoms. Uh, but it's such an odd shape, they decided to divide it into three different stages. And if you're familiar with the great sitcoms of the day, like My Sister Sam, Growing Pains, or Alice, oh, yeah. they were all shot here. But we're gonna go inside and check out what's going on. Oh, it's the Roar, Big Little Dandy, now Voyager, all shot here, Giant. Uh, also shot here in shows like uh, ER and uh, Eight is Enough, also shot here on uh, the sound stage. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. So just uh, watch your step. We're going to meet in that second little area beyond the door. That's cool. But uh, in here again, the magic happens in here. This is where any kind of thing can happen, and it's over and over again. Some productions are here for years. Some are for here for a day. Mm -hmm. Hey, go into the Ellen stage. That is her rip room over there. That's where she sells her wares, and uh, audience members can wait for a couple minutes. 
I should have probably looked up to see what other productions and shows were here back in the day that I'd probably be a little more familiar with. Oh, that's the box where everyone jumps out of. This goes underneath the stage where they, they always have her scaring guests and stuff. At least I think that would go underneath the stage. You guys uh, watch the show? Yeah. Sometimes you get the little clips on YouTube and one of the funny happens. Usually she's scaring people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the chairs, of course, are covered up because they're uh, on what they call hiatus right now. They're just not in production. They'll come back probably in September. And uh, they just want to keep the dust off of it. And, of course, we have cats who uh, roam the lot. Who uh, We call them the Cagney cats because uh, back in the day, James Cagney was complaining about the little uh, Mickey Mouses that were hanging out in his dressing room. Can you take a um, some of the talk shows on the website? But it's a great opportunity if you want to be in production, because uh, you're literally watching the production happen, whether it's a sitcom or, or a, uh, you know, a game show or whatever. I just asked the guide, and he said that the Star Wars holiday special was filmed right here in this very soundstage. If that's true, that is amazing. Harvey Corman <laughs> and the rest of the, you know, and of course, obviously, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. Harrison Ford, all right in here too. Which is a fairly famous gate because it's been used in a lot of productions like Blazing Saddles and oh, yeah. uh, Argo. This is where in the Blazing Saddles where they all go running yep. out of at the end of the movie. Harvey Corman runs and, out of uh, here. Harvey Corman, all that, yeah. Uh -huh. It's a great scene and it's a nice kind of- Oh, right over there, yeah. The, Get me off the, this uh, picture. Palm trees and all that. Uh, Johnny Depp also walked here for Ed Wood when he was uh, walking oh, yeah. the studio lot. It was right over here too. Uh, of course, stage five and six, we have number 10 over here, which was home to the reel for many years. We also did uh, uh, the United States of Al was originally on that stage, but we moved it recently. Ooh, craft services. Stage number nine is home uh, to uh, shows like AJ and the Queen, Night Courts, if you remember that one back in the 80s. Oh yeah, Night Court. Also filmed on go. stage number nine. Look at that. And uh, not a great shot of our stage 16 with the uh, giant logo up there. But uh, I'll try and grab a shot of that. And yes, Griffith Park over there is Walton Mountain. Thank you. Believe it or not. There's our wonderful security team there. And a lot of really loud noise. Uh, no, no, they did not. No. The only thing they did here for uh, Michael Jackson was a Pepsi commercial when he was dancing with uh, Alfonso Rivero on the Hennessy Street back there. And that was uh, pretty much it. I think that might have been the Sunset Gower performance taupe is the name of the color of the sound stages. And uh, it's just for Warner Brothers. They can have other colors on some of the sound stages around town, but uh, it's gonna be just slightly different or completely different colors. So that's also how you can kind of tell. Um, like La La Land, they actually walk down this street uh, in North America. It's close to 100 feet tall. We have a new uh, program just starting to build their sets in there, and it's called Abbott Elementary. So make sure you look that up. But Stage 16 has an interesting history. It was never uh, this build. This building was never this big until the 1930s. Right? Huh? We noticed too, uh, there's Universal Studios up there. We can see the Harry Potter uh, Hogwarts over there. A lot of people ask, oh, why is it over there not here? Well, we're a studio, <laughs> not a theme park. So we license it to have stuff. Universal build. But again, back here we have paint. Uh, we have a area where we can create molds for any type of product from, you know, fake brick and rocks. There is Walton's Mountain. On the other side of it is the Hollywood sign. Oh, that's right. Do you know why they don't like the sign like anymore? They never really did. I mean, I think for movies they would do it. But for the most part, they really have never uh, really lit it up. Only for like special occasions, you know. Yeah, Ability and we have the space, they're gonna come here. Uh, a lot of, yeah, yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, Marvel's here constantly. Uh, I mean, in 23, we had Ant-Man and the Wasp a couple of years ago, and we're all tour guides driving by and we see like the ship. It's like, ooh, that's so cool. Uh, Captain Marvel did filming on the lot, Guardians of the Galaxy. 
Uh, volume 2 did filming on the lot, Avengers Endgame and uh, Age of Ultron all sized those for their very last season. Stage uh, number 30 just up ahead uh, was home to the West Wing for many years. If you're a big West Wing fan, the entire White House was actually built inside that soundstage. Actually, let me go around the back of it. Because it's kind of unusual for uh, sets to not only utilize their soundstage, but they will utilize the outside of it too. Ooh, that's kind of neat. I like seeing things for the first time too. Wow. <laughs> a of Flavor Flav, <laughs> which is very random. Sorry, I like bringing up random things. Uh, was also on stage number 30, which is neat. It's kind of crazy. All right, so our next uh, adventure is gonna take us over here to stage 48. This is where we have our friend set. And this is the real set that you saw on the show and the reunion. And you're gonna be able to take pictures there. The sad part about it is I have to say goodbye, which I don't want to. But you have action and magic right after that with uh, the Wizarding World. You can get sorted and we have a ton of DC Universe things in there. But I encourage you guys, if there's any more questions, anything you guys want to ask before we all depart ways? Like why? It's, end of the <laughs> like what? it's never the end. The tour goes on. Well, thank you guys for coming and taking Mark's tour. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something cool about the place. Uh, we'll see you guys on social media. Feel free to hashtag. And I love seeing everybody's photos. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your time here. After the backlot tour, you walk through another area where they have a lot of different movie props, some old, some new, just different, different, you know, different ranges of everything here at Warner Brothers. A lot with that have you know little placards giving you the info on what everything is, as well as I'm not sure if a lot of these are real sets from the shows or maybe reproductions, but they will also allow guests to get photos either sitting on the couches of some of the famous TV shows here at Warner Brothers, which is pretty neat. If you so choose, you want to get a photo, you can get a photo with the with the sets or with the recreations, if you will. All right, All right I'm gonna make some magic here. I'm going to put myself, okay, hello, waving my hand here. This is me, so I'm going the, hey, there you go. You're just, <laughs> that works. There you go. Yeah, it's working. There you go, you do it better than I am. This states tools of the trade, a lot of the, how sound works, or at least did back in the day, some of the, the equipment from the olden days, if you will. There we go, the early days of sound. Decided to go ahead and get a coffee, a piping hot caffeinated beverage, you know, kind of a win in row moment. Might as well get a little warm caffeine from Central Park. Even got the neon up there, and not just the neon, but also the, the, the logo on the front of the glass. All right, cheers. cheers. You went with the uh, iced tea, it's not focusing, there we go. You went with the iced tea. I went with the coffee. There are even some screen used outfits over there that some of the cast was wearing. About to load up on another little tramp. Well, I call it a tram. It's more like an extended kind of golf cart as well to go over to the next exhibit. Now, for whatever reason, they didn't take they didn't take us over there, which is where they filmed, you know, Dukes of Hazard, Pretty Little Liars, things like that. But there's some production going on. But it's interesting because. There are some other of the golf carts over there. Maybe it's another tour. Maybe it's like a another level tour, like a tour. Maybe, maybe like a VIP tour. <laughs> Like the square where the church was, because they were filming. We just like saw some people walk around the houses and stuff. So, and I'm not really sure where all those areas are called. <laughs> yeah, it, well, there you have. Um, uh, oh gosh. Not gonna look anything like what <laughs> you would assume the area Allison's house would be in. Thank you so much. This is the jungle, is what we call it right here. Oh, uh, who was put in back in uh, the early 1950s in a movie called Santiago. It was used, if you, I, I know you're not old enough to remember, but it, it was a 1970 <laughs> television show called Kung Fu. Now if we kind of come to modern daytime, they've redone the TV show Kung Fu. And now the main star is a woman. 
Oh, neat. So uh, they, they haven't done any shooting here yet, but I think it'd be really awesome if they would come back bit. and use some of these original yeah. sets, just as an homage to that original show. Definitely, since they have all this cool bamboo back yeah. there. Yeah. Why not? That's Plus, it's it the, the last existing jungle set in Hollywood. Uh, if you saw Kong Skull Island. Yeah. Okay, you remember the scene where the helicopter crash lands? They're in like this water pad with all the, the, the weeds growing up out of the water. Yeah. They, by the way, there's Oh, oh my gosh, there it is. I got so excited. Like it doesn't look anything at all. <laughs> Like, so cool. <laughs> what it looked like on the show. Wow, so it's right next to the lagoon. Yeah, That's right over there is the lagoon. So crazy. And you can see it's, it's what we call, it's not really even a practical, it's just what we call a facade. So, you know, as you go through that door, there's, I don't know, it may be four by eight <laughs> piece of plywood on the floor, and oh, you just go cool. down more steps in, into the back of it there. Can I take a photo in front of it? Right Absolutely. Back? Oh, thank you so much. It didn't, want, or that you want to see, I'm more than happy to, to come oh. out and help you out. Thank you so much. Now this is the lagoon. You get a really good look at that in Pee Wee's Big Adventure when Pee Wee's swinging on the bicycle. Yeah. Oh no way! Yeah. <laughs> the camera's over there on that side, and Pee Wee's swinging from there to that side over there. Oh, cool. Did you happen to see The Last Samurai? Yeah. Okay. There's one scene in The Last Samurai, and they're kind of holed up in this beautiful. Well, the Japanese. I don't know what you call them those paper houses. Oh just yeah. Gorgeous. They look like a you know a, a, a Tiffany style lamp. But they built a dock going all the way across the oh, lagoon. Wow. And the dock had all these torches kind of lining it, and they had that beautiful house. And the only reason why I kind of mention it to everybody is just when you think of the cinematography, just an outstandingly beautiful That picture. scene is just gorgeous. It was, wasn't it? Well, this is where they had that scene, where, wow. where the samurai were confronted by the police. This is Ira's Roadside Diner, Million Dollar Baby. Oh, wow. Are you uh That was Eastwood, of, right? Clint Eastwood? Yes, uh-huh. Uh, are you a fan of the TV show Dexter? <laughs> Yes. Uh, this was used in one of Dexter's films. His writing cabin oh. in the Waltons. John Boy's writing cabin? Yeah. Oh, right here a, on the water. Yeah, when he, when he got, it doesn't look anything now like yeah. it did when it was his writing cabin. So I couldn't tell you how many thousands of productions probably Where was since. Walton's, where was the house from the Waltons located? That used to be right over here. Okay. Uh, side the other it. side of the jungle. Then they moved it over to another property we own called Warner Ranch, which is the original location of the fountain, the Friends Fountain. Oh, yeah. yeah. They moved that over here to our main lot. But uh, that's where that house used to be. So right. that house still exists just over there? Over there. Well, the, there was an arsonist in L.A. It was called the Pillow Arsonist. If there's any silver lining here, he got over to the Walton's house. No. Threw a bunch of pillows into it, got it on fire, but our security caught him. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So that's now how you got him. in jail. I don't know if he's still in jail, but he was in jail for a long time. Pillow arsonist. That's crazy. Wow. This used to be our old western set. Uh, it's called Laramie Street, back at that time. Uh, so like Blazing Saddles and all that? Blazing Saddles did shoot here, yes. Didn't they film one of the, the scenes from National Lampoon's Vacation? The yeah, western they, scene? That was not here. That was, uh, they did shoot the, um, see where the, the stage wagon pulls up. Right. And the guy's jack his wheels. Yeah, yeah. That shot on Hennessy Street. Okay. Yes. Hennessy Street. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Right. Its real name is Mount Lee. Okay. <laughs> the other side of Mount Lee, that's where the Hollywood sign's located. Also Griffith Park, correct? Yes. And the, uh, and the, uh, and the zoo, the LA Zoo. Right over there. So the barn happened to really be there yeah. at the location that they were shooting. That's so, cool. so when they got here to the lot, you know, after that pilot episode, they said, well, the barn. And there was a building already there. I had the window and you saw over her shoulder. Oh my god. I thought that's the best shot in the whole show. That is amazing. <laughs> oh my god, hello. They that. repainted, they added these steps. Be, from Ray, Gilmore right Girls. Now. Okay, so now 
This is rosewood. <gasps> oh, it is. <laughs> Now the, the main difference you'll probably notice with the town square, mm -hmm. the gazebo's in there now. That's the gazebo from uh, Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls. Um, it was also where Mr. Freeze had his wedding in Batman and Robin. No way. But in, uh, hello, in um, Pretty Little Liars, remember there was a clock yes. that sat in that town square right there. So the gazebo can easily be moved out. It's on rollers. Oh, no they way. Just roll it right out. Oh and God. then they would put the clock in there and they had the little boxes with bushes to go around everything with. Yeah. And of course there's the church. From Lost Boys. Yes. Lost the church they used in Lost Boys when they went in to get the holy water during a, uh, yeah. was that a baptism or a wedding? I think it was a baptism. Yeah, bath <laughs> and Monster Squad was all through Monster here too. Monster Squad, and, absolutely. And uh, Dukes of Hazard too, Dukes right? of Hazard. This was Hazard County, Georgia. It certainly was. So cool. They would race the General Lee around this square. Oh, cool. There were several times, I'll tell you a little, little back there too. Every single time they ever jumped the General Lee in that TV show, they totaled the General Lee. So they went through all, I think it was 67 Chargers. They went through all the ones they could get. They wrecked them all. So they had to start modifying 60, 68 Chargers the very next year. It was 66, 66 or 67. I can't remember. remember. But they had to start modifying those. So they didn't total them? Yeah, because they would just total them. And so it gave them about this false sense of Now, I don't know what they were shooting, and I can't get this up there today, but the final episode of Trickle Wires were up in this intersection right here. Yeah. And I don't know what scene it was they were shooting. Was that one of the dance scenes from The Mask right over there? Yes. Uh huh. With Jim Carrey? Down that way. Jim Carrey, um, Cuban Peak. Yep, that was it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Boom, jicky, boom, boom. Yeah, jicky. that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know all of them, man. Right? Actually, it, it's <laughs> funny. You listen to the original version of this song, Desi Arnaz from I Love Lucy. Yeah. Desi did the original version, and it's so much slower. Now, as much as I just wanted to focus this episode on the backlot tour and the tram golf cart tour, cannot help but also mentioning that there is an entire new section that they have opened very recently with a lot of DC Comics movie props, screen used outfits some of the characters and the cast were wearing all through including aquaman a whole section devoted to aquaman and an entire section devoted to batman all the different versions of batman including one of my favorites which is the 89 tim burton batman there's a whole section over over in here as well so pretty much dc you know marvel there's a lot of a lot of things around the Southern California area dedicated to Marvel, so it's good to have DC also represented in SoCal as well. And then also Harry Potter. There's a whole section for Harry Potter, Wizarding World, interactive displays, and whatnot. And I finally found out, after all this time, it has been confirmed what house, the sorting, ho the sorting hat has given me what house, the sorting hat has deemed what house I am. And that house, is Ravenclaw! Yay! And that's going to do it for today. You got some lip gloss. Yeah, I got so much Pretty Little Liar stuff. <laughs> I got, I didn't get any Pretty Little Liar stuff, but I did get a couple t-shirts, a tour t-shirt, and I want to say a huge thank you to Clint. So huge, he's amazing. So we did the original tour, which we, we said there's some, there were some areas that, that they didn't take us on the tour, so we inquired with a couple of the, the workers workers and the employees and they said it is up to the guide based on the hour tour because it's one hour for the tour and then and then the rest of us another hour to go through the DC stuff and they said it's really up to the to the guide on where they take us and our first guide was amazing he was so he funny. was great <laughs> however it is it is more of a time issue so when we got off of that went up and casually asked and there were certain areas that we didn't get to go to they said hold on one second they got on the walkie-talkies and in drove Clint Clint. He was he was awesome and he asked what do you want to see and took us pretty much to everywhere that we mentioned and through some amusing little anecdotes and facts and figures. You got to see some of the stuff that you were originally were like oh well I have to come see it next time. You kind of knocked that off your bucket list today by seeing it. Yeah it was amazing. So very hospitable. The, the, I should before the, before the video ends I want to give you the price of what it is. I can't remember off the top of my head but Way less than a hundred dollars. I think, I think it's it was like sixty-five or something. So like sixty-five dollars each. So it was like 120 130 dollars. I will end the video with 
the exact amount and very casual unlike Universal Studios which I like Universal Studios but you're on the humongous tram tour this is a little more personal and once again they brought Clint in who yeah. gave we got gave like us, our own private tour it was so cool. it was cool that's not something they usually do but because we inquired they gave us like a, a little a little magical moment it was sorts. amazing it was awesome all right that's gonna do it for today I'll see you in the next video the vlog is over and yes, I still look at this and think of Animaniacs. And in the gift shop where I got some of the items, where I got this, they had some Animaniacs merch too. Let me, let me zoom out. I ended up, I was gonna buy four t-shirts. I put two of them back. I said, yeah, I'm just gonna buy two. Pretty awesome. The new parking lot here also. That's it. There it is. $69. The most popular is the studio tour. Not bad.